Hello, I'm Simon Christie and welcome to the one and only Four Drive TV. On this week's episode, we've got the mudslinging Matakana. We've got tips on how to get the best out of your 12 volt system. We've got a yaw rig, a comp rig and plenty more. Let's get stuck into another huge episode of Four Drive TV. Tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard. Welcome everyone, this is Matakana 2012, Shepparton, Decker Complex, I'm from the GV Four Wheel Drive Club and we welcome everyone here. Good morning, it's John from Bitters Four Wheel Drive, so we're out mud racing at Matakana in Shepparton. It's a sunny day at the moment, so hopefully it stays that way. Here's Ramon, Vice President of the Golden Valley Four Wheel Drive Club. Looks like you've got a nice track set up for today. Yeah, it should be good, Simon. The mud's not too deep. The water's not too deep at this stage. We'll see how it pans out. It should be good fun. And what hand did you have in building this track? Clint Reed from Reedy's 4x4 in Bendigo. He come down, he's tied up with the Mud Racing Association. He designed the track, cut the track for us, graded it, set it all up, and we just finished it off and added the water to it, made it into mud. And the Golden Valley Four Wheel Drive Club this weekend is working with the Mud Racing Association? Yes we are mate, in conjunction with them. We're hosting the event basically. We've had to get insurance through the Mud Racing Association. They've come on board and supported us today. So the facility you've got here is basically perfect for what you're doing? It is pretty much. We're very lucky with Decker. They sit here, do what you like with it. So long as you can put it back to normal, it's all yours. Go for your life. And just a few kilometres out of Shepparton Central? That's right mate, about four or five k's out of town, sort of out in the back blocks, it's good. bit different to last year. We've got two tracks this year. Everybody's going to have a great day. Weather's beautiful. Just perfect day for racing. 21 degrees. There's a lot of cars here, a lot of spectators and everything's going to be a really, really, really top day. Wish you're all here. Bit of fun for me and the boys. I've built a car so that I can drive it, but also my workers can have a bit of fun. Yeah, it should be a good day. Looking forward to it. Looks like we've got a stack of trucks ready for racing today. We have. We've got a massive turnout. We've got a heap of mud racers. We've got a heap of comp trucks that have bolted some different tyres on and come down to have a run and play with us today. Can you talk about the different classes you've got across all these vehicles? We've got four different classes, four-cylinder, six-cylinder V8 and ladies. And the mud racers, they run their own classes as well. And a crowd favourite, you've always got juniors in the mud racing. Juniors are awesome. A couple of them getting around here this morning. There's one, he's six years old, he's only knee-height or grasshopper. He's scooting around a little Suzuki Sierra and he's going well. He'll have a good day. Great, safe and fun sport for the family. It is, most definitely. It is good fun. It's a controlled environment. they got all the right safety gear on. It should be a good day. Mud racing is good fun, it's quite a bit of driver skill involved, it's controlled aggression I guess and you can't see probably 60% of the time when you're driving so you've got to memorise the track and be aware of where you're at because you cannot see a thing out the windscreen most of the time.
Don't forget the great selection of four-wheel drive prizes on offer on our website. Send me an email for a chance to win an ARB $500 gift voucher, a set of Nava Ultima 225 driving lights, a $500 gift voucher from Terrain Tamer, a Donaldson fuel filter kit and promo pack, a set of Tread 4x4 recovery boards and carry bags, a water watch, water in fuel engine alarm, a $500 superior engineering gift voucher for selected suspension components, a mean mother heavy duty air compressor, a strong arm recovery kit from Ultimate 4 Wheel Drive, a 12 month subscription to Dirt Comp Magazine, a Berrimer diesel heavy duty diesel fuel filter, and a Spanset Outback recovery kit. For full details, visit the 4 Wheel Drive TV website and prize page at fourwheeldrivetv.com au forward slash free stuffs. It's your chance to win some great 4x4 gear courtesy of 4 Wheel Drive TV and our generous sponsors. If you drive a 4 wheel drive with or without a dual battery kit, then it's time to upgrade. Modern vehicles and modern battery technologies require smart electronics, and the Piranha Off-Road Products DBE140 Dual Battery Controller has all the smart grunt you will need packed into an affordable and tiny package. Priced at just $170, the Piranha DBE140 is the smart choice in dual battery management. For more information on how you can stay charged, visit piranhaoffroad.com.au. The next generation of shock absorbers is here. Leading the way in 4x4 suspension development, Old Man Emu introduces the most advanced and finely tuned shock absorber on the market. Nitro Charger Sport incorporates a new valving system that instantly adapts to all terrain for an outstanding smooth ride and phenomenal control. Backed by a three-year, 60,000 kilometre warranty, you can trust Nitro Charger Sport, built in Australia for Australian conditions. I'm Chris Weston, off-road racer and owner of Off-Road Rush. And I wouldn't race on anything else than my Mickey Thompson tyres. I trust my Mickey Thompson's a high speed. They can handle wet or dry without any trouble. And that means I can keep racing while the competitors stop to change tyres. Mickey Thompson? No wonder they call them legendary. Call 1300 Mickey for your nearest dealer. Viewers, for something different, today I'd like to talk about my rear end. Now I'm talking about the rear of the GU Patrol, and more specifically, some fantastic and very intelligent electronics we've recently had installed. Now in the back, we've got a drawer system fitted, with some very neat little hidey holes for installing electronics. In the back on this side, we've got a step-up transformer for our dual battery. Tucked away neatly on this side of the vehicle, we've got a 600 watt inverter for running all of our 240 volt accessories. And up the top here, Hello, up the top here, we've got some really cool LED reverse lighting. We've got one here in black, we've got one here in white. It's the yin and yang of reverse lighting. Tucked up nice and neatly under here, we've got some side lighting. We've got a matching side light on this rear corner and they're all wired together. Let's now start with a close look at our step up transformer. Well, you actually can't see it because it's tucked away in this top left hand corner underneath our drawer system. It's in a space that normally doesn't get used so it's the ideal spot to put an electronic item like this. It's protected, but it fits in nicely with the wiring of the vehicle. Now, why do we need a step-up transformer? Well, in the back here, if you have a close look, you'll see that we've got our dual battery kit in here. Now, our dual battery kit is running one of the amazing Exide orbital batteries. It's an amazing battery because it's quite unique in the way that it acts as a cranking battery. At room temperature, around 20 degrees, it's got close to a thousand cranking amps but it is also a deep cycle battery. So a very unique and an ideal battery for a dual battery system. But because it is such a high tech battery, you need modern electronics to get the right sort of voltage to it. Now, funny enough, talking about modern electronics, the alternator in our GU Nissan Patrol is not up to the task. And many alternators these days are not putting out the required 14.4 volts to charge a battery like this correctly. So in essence, the step up DC20 transformer we've got fitted in line with our dual battery kit is stepping up 20 amp charge at 14.4 volts to correctly maintain this battery. It's going to improve the life of the battery, it's going to improve the performance of the battery and it's going to make sure that we've got premium electronics with our dual battery system. All right, now having a look inside the driver's rear door of our GU Patrol here, how many cars have you seen with a hardwired 240 volt power board? 
probably not many. We've got this wired into a 600 watt projector inverter. If you can see here, I've got a switch that turns it on and off, which means it doesn't have to be running the whole time. But when it is running, and when we're traveling out there filming stories for you guys, we've got 240 volt power for charging all of our cameras and battery. It's a really nifty idea. It's neatly tucked away in a space that you would normally not use within the drawer system. Great access for 240 volts, very, very helpful. Now with our camp reverse and side lights, we don't have a white one and a black one because of a fashion statement. We're actually testing the standard four wheel drive unit and the marine unit to see if there's any real difference apart from the obvious color change. Now with our reverse lights here, when you're reversing in the bush, when you're setting up a campsite, or when you need light behind you, possibly hooking up a trailer, it's very important you have light that is a nice clear white light, but also light that is shining down on the subject matter will give you much better penetration and a much better coverage. The combination we've set up here is very interesting and the way we've wired it up is very interesting. For starters, we've got a switch just inside the back door here that will switch the lights on and off whether the car is running or not. Switch on the pillar pod that turns the lights on and off and they are also activated when we put the car in reverse. So it's a great combination of lighting, it's great for camping, great reversing and realistically it's all about safety. Well that's it guys, there's some of the little tricks that we've done recently to the rear of our GU patrol. Just to summarise, on this side We've got the projector DC20 step-up transformer looking after the battery in our Piranha dual battery system. On this side, it's the projector 600 watt inverter supplying all of our 240 volt needs. And up on the roof rack, some great Nava LED lighting making our camping and reversing as safe as can possibly be. Well, I hope that's inspired you to get some work done on your four-wheel drive, get it done the right way, and we'll see you out in the tracks. What's the history behind Matakana? Because it has been run before. Yes, it has. We ran the last event about three years ago. We got a bit carried away with some of the water holes. We didn't have a lot of comp trucks like we've got entered today. We had a lot more standard vehicles. They got busted up pretty bad and got a bit of bad publicity for it. But we've born it again and we'll see how we go this time and see if we can make it work again. Talk us through the obstacles you've got on the track today. Range from a few shallow holes, 30 to 45 centimetres, a couple of jumps that started to get a bit gnarly towards the end of the day. And we did see the track change quite a bit over the day. Yep, definitely. It started off very wet and sloppy and ended up still wet and sloppy, but a lot of hard pack underneath and the holes got deeper and the water got deeper as the day went on. And a little bit of bash and crash between the teams competing? Yeah, there was. There was a few grudge matches. A couple of the guys come down from Melbourne and they got stuck together at one stage down there in the bottom end, needed a bucket of water to separate them. But hey, look, it's all good fun. A couple of broken headlights and a couple of indicators, but nothing too serious. Now, Ramon, halfway through the day, somebody had a brain fart and decided to put me in a vehicle. That was quite funny. That was actually my idea. We had a Hyundai Sonata that was supplied by Thompson Motor Group, so we had a bit of fun with it, cut the exhaust off it, and yeah, had a bit of a laugh. I thought, you'd be a good one to put in, so put you in the car. The rest is history. The car is much worse for wear, unfortunately. I don't think it's worth anything at all now, apart from the $100 at the scrap centre. That's about all we'll get for it. How many competitors in total? About 75 that we can gather at this stage. Through the gate today we probably would have had, I would say, 1,500 people thereabouts. It's been really good for spectators. And it's certainly an event you've put on for the spectators here in Shepparton? Absolutely, that's what it's all about. Spectators is what makes the event. The mud racing guys and the competitors, they come and supply the entertainment for the day. Keep the spectators happy, that's what it all comes down to. Fantastic day, we've been blessed. Absolutely perfect. Sunshine, a little bit of breeze to blow the dust away. Not that there's much dust, but absolutely perfect. Couldn't ask for any more.
on private property here today, so we thought we'd cut loose with a tug of war competition. There was a fair few guys that put their hand up, thought their truck was better than his mates. At the end of the day, Jared Thomas, he was the man, he fixed them all up. He was driving a GQ Patrol 4.2 turbo diesel with a set of swampers on it. Yeah, it had all the good bits on it. I think he tugged four or five different trucks out of the way. Yeah, he had a really good day. Won himself a voucher for 200 bucks from DRC Fabrications, and I'm sure he'll put it to good use. In between episodes of your favourite TV show, visit 4WheelDriveTV.com.au for the latest in 4x4 news, links, prizes and videos. Stay in touch with myself and Danny and receive regular updates, promos and photos via our Facebook page. And visit YouTube.com forward slash 4 tube for our latest 4x4 videos. There's three great ways to stay up to date and in touch with our growing 4 drive community in between episodes. Finally, the driving light you've always wanted is here, boasting a class-leading free-form reflector and a super-tough polycarbonate lens and ABS housing. The all-new Nava Ultimate 225 is a revolutionary driving light, available in halogen, halogen blue and HID, in both spread and pencil beams, and supplied complete with a plug-and-play wiring harness and polycarbonate lens protectors. These Aussie Outback Tough Lights outshine the competition. Visit nava.com.au for more information and make the switch to the brightest lights in town. Viewers, the wait is over. Shop online at the 4 Wheel Drive TV store for personalised merchandise, 4 Wheel Drive TV clothing, 4 Wheel Drive products and even DVD subscriptions. That's right, two episodes of 4 Wheel Drive TV posted out to you every fortnight for the whole series and all for just $50. Support your favourite program, wear the brand you love and never miss another episode with our collector's DVD subscriptions. Get shopping at 4WheelDriveTV.com.au with the 4 Wheel Drive TV online store. Hi, I'm Gavin Walker, and this is my 2006 Toyota Land Cruiser. I've had this car for about two years now. So far, I've done a turbo kit to it. I've put two two and a half inch lift in it, 33 mud terrain tyres, got a UHF radio, just recently got a GPS. In the future, we'd like to put a steel rear bar with real carrier and double jerry can holder. I have a roof rack, I've put an awning on the vehicle. I've also fitted side steps, a winch, and a set of spotties. In the future I'd like to put some air lockers in it, but I'm still in two minds about doing that because at the present time the car does everything I want it to do, goes everywhere I want it to go. I'm a big believer in the gear is only as good as the user. So far in my last eight years of four wheel drive I've never had drama going up any track. Currently my fiance and I, we go to the high country, to the snow, to the beach in Robe in South Australia. In the future we would like to go to Love Day 4x4 Park and then in a year or two head up north and go up to the Kimberleys and so on. If you'd like to be the weekly Your Rig right here on 4 Drive TV, then send an email to myself with Your Rig in the subject line. Each weekly winner takes home an electric blue span set snatch strap, a complete U-Fix-It windscreen repair kit, a DP chip stubby holder, pen and Berrimer diesel cap, an ARB cap, ARB Penrith stubby holder, an emergency can of ARB Outback Survival Socks, an RFI stubby holder and an RFI cap, a HEMA Great Desert Tracks Atlas and Guide, a 911 Memorial Cap courtesy of 511 Tactical, an ARB Rechargeable LED Adventure Light, ARB's latest new product, Forby the Soft Toy, an off road ready Travel Mate tyre pressure gauge, a set of smart scissors from our good friends at Keesler Knives, a Donaldson Diesel Fuel Filter Kit, a Nava Hand Size Palm LED Light, two revolutionary Expander Tent Pegs. A magazine from Bow Hunter, Wild Deer and Hunting Adventures, and Dirt Comp. And it's all neatly packed up in an ARB cargo gear carry bag. I'd like to thank 4 Wheel Drive TV, Simon and Randa Christie, and also a big thank you to the sponsors in the prize pack given away today. Had a fantastic day, and it's a great opportunity to be on the Your Rig section of 4 Wheel Drive TV.
Now, Ramon, how much effort has gone into building this event up from the club? Absolutely massive. It's amazing how much effort goes into it. The hours behind the scenes. It's a huge effort to get everybody here this morning and get started. What's the future for Matakana? Matakana, we hope will grow bigger and bigger. Let's keep the association going and see how we go. That's a great club. What can you tell us about the Golden Valley Four Wheel Drive Club? Four Wheel Drive Club, it was formed in, I think it was the late 70s. It's a, look, it's a really good family club. We've got a few guys that race in the competition stuff. And we've got a couple of winch challenge guys that run in our club as well. It's a good family oriented club. Everybody's pretty easy going and it's all about having a good time. Well, the Golden Valley Four Wheel Drive Club, how can people find out more information about them? We have a website if you go to goldenvalleyfourwheeldriveclub.com.au or we have a Facebook page or you can go to matakana.com.au, that'll get you there as well. It takes more than just the club to run an event like this, so what sponsors have you got on board helping you out? The Golden Valley Four Drive Club uh, is a not-for-profit organisation and we could not survive without the help of local sponsors and much, really, really, really much appreciate it. New Trend Transportable Homes, Yukon Enterprises, Thompson Motor Group, Team Mud Rhino, they were here today, Opposite Lock here in Shepparton, KPD 4x4, Maxis Tyres, GV 4x4 Recyclers, Black and White Fencing, Tigers 11, they come on board with us as well. So yeah, we've had a good day for sponsors, it's been excellent. All right, when it gets down to it, it's nuts and bolts, first, second, third placed. Who are the winners? In the six cylinder class, Jared Longhorn, 38.13 was his best time for the day. In second place in the six cylinder class was Jesse McCorkran. He got 38.12, so only 0.1 of a second. In the same car, mind you. First place was Tristan Aegis. He's actually a local club member in 37.19. He won the light bar supplied by KPD 4x4. In the four cylinder class, Matt Cool. He done the quickest time of 37 seconds, which happened to be the quickest time of the day, full stop. He won himself a Tigers 11 winch and a set of Maxxis 31, 10 and a half, 15 big horn tyres for the day as well. In eight cylinder class, Trevor Edwards, he won eight cylinder class in the best time of 39.47. And in the ladies, Emily Simpson Phillip, she smashed all the other ladies up in 50.09 and had a really good day as well. Jared Longhorn also had a pretty good day. He won his entry back for the day. So yeah, overall, not too bad at all. John from Bitters, we've been at mud racing out here at Shepparton and at Matakana. We've had an awesome day. Brendan's first drive ever, he's come first in class for the day. I've come first in the super modified class in a standard car, which is pretty cool too. G'day, Brendan from Bitters Four Wheel Drive here today. Just been down at Matakana at Shepparton with the Mud Racing Association. We've got the company car here. We built it in three weeks after hours and we've come away with the goods with John winning super modified and I'm on the modified class having the fastest time of the day. It's been a great weekend. Hi, I'm Brendan Lake from 4x4 Wheel Co. On a previous episode of 4 Wheel Drive TV, we showed you the advantages of Teflon coated wheels. This weekend we've actually been out in the high country of Victoria and we've been through various terrains. Mud crossings, water crossings, very dusty roads, rocky roads, been through tracks where there's trees falling down, twigs over the road. As you can see with the ATX Teflon wheels, there's no scratches and there's very minimal dust and dirt on them. Just like the Teflon coating, as your normal household products, it is resistant to sticking and scratching as well. 
Well, it's time to head home now. And as I mentioned previously, we've thrown everything we can at the car and the wheels. And as you can see by the state of the car, we've got several hours ahead of us cleaning. But I'm about to show you how easy it is to wash the Teflon coated wheels. Preferably you use warm soapy water, but this is how easy it is. With the dry rag, you can see how easy the dust and dirt and grime comes off the wheel. John from Bitters Four Wheel Drive. This is a new mud racing truck. Me and the boys at work have done after hours over the last three weeks. A little bit of a rush, but it's good to go, hopefully, fingers crossed. It's a very standard car, just had all the weight chopped out and tractor tyres put in. The engine in this car is a standard TB42. It's got extractors and a two and a half inch exhaust and an electronic ignition. Other than that, it's just a second hand engine we had laying around in the shop that we adjusted the tappets on and bolted in. Should perform really well, I'm hoping. It should be a good fun thing. It's entry level budget car, but it should be fast. It's no V8 though. <laughs> right, that'll be it. Viewers, thank you so much for tuning in for another big episode of Four Wheel Drive TV. Remember, jump onto fourwheeldrivetv.com.au. Only a few weeks left to get your entries in for all of the prizes we've got on offer. I'm Simon Christie. Tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard. I look forward to your company next week.